periodic table of elements. In the periodic table all chemical elements are classified according to their atomic number and their chemical properties in main group elements and transition group elements. In the following we will first take a closer look at the main group elements and later in the video we will also include the transition group elements. The main groups summarized in columns are indicated by Greek numbers. In addition to this vertically division, the periodic table is also divided horizontally into so-called periods, which we will discuss in more detail later in this video. Within a period, the number of protons always increases by one from left to right, thus determining a new element. The number of protons therefore determines the position of an element in the periodic table and is also called atomic number. The number of protons in the atom of an element is indicated in the element box in the upper left corner. With an atomic number of 17, a chlorine atom thus has a total of 17 protons in its nucleus. For an electrically neutral atom, this number also corresponds to the number of electrons in the atomic shell. A chlorine atom thus also has a total of 17 electrons in the atomic shell. To the right of the element chlorine is the element argon with one proton more in its nucleus. With this element the third period ends, and the fourth period begins with the element potassium. The atomic number has increased again by one. Note that the atomic number between the element calcium and gallium increases by 11 in the present figure. However, this is only because we have hidden the transition group elements. If we include these elements, it is still true that the proton number increases by one within each period. In addition to the number of protons, the element box contains the average total number of nucleons in the atomic nucleus. This number can be found in the upper right corner of the element box. This number corresponds to the sum of the number of protons and the average number of neutrons, and is also called nucleon number. For chlorine, the average number of nucleons is 35.45. This decimal number is due to the fact that although all chlorine atoms basically have 17 protons in their nucleus, not all chlorine atoms have the same number of neutrons. Atoms that belong to the same element and thus have the same number of protons, but have a different number of neutrons, are also called isotopes. Chlorine has two stable isotopes. About 76% of all chlorine atoms have 18 neutrons in their nucleus and thus have 35 nucleons, the remaining 24% have 20 neutrons and thus have 37 nucleons. Out of 100 randomly selected chlorine atoms, 76 atoms would have 35 nucleons and 24 atoms would have 37 nucleons. Thus, the 100 chlorine atoms together have a total of 3,548 nucleons. If we divide this number by the total of 100 chlorine atoms which have been considered, then statistically a single chlorine atom has on average 35.48 nucleons in its nucleus. The deviation in the decimal place from the literature value is due to the fact that we have rounded the percentages of the isotopes in this example. Since protons and neutrons have almost identical masses and are about 2,000 times heavier than electrons, in principle the total mass of an atom is determined by the number of nucleons alone. For this reason, the nucleon number is also called mass number. On the basis of the present calculation, one can very quickly recognize the basic procedure for determining the average mass number of an atom. To do this, one simply has to multiply the number of nucleons of the respective isotopes by the corresponding proportions and then add them up. Let us consider the element magnesium with the atomic number 12, which has three stable isotopes. 79% of the magnesium atoms have 24 nucleons, 10% have 25 nucleons, and 11% have 26 nucleons. If we multiply the nucleon number by their respective proportions and then sum up, we obtain an average mass number of 24.32. Here, too, the deviation from the literature value of 24.305 is again due to the rounding in the proportions. In addition to the mass number, the so-called electronegativity of the element is indicated in the bottom left corner of an element box. The electronegativity is a relative measure for the tendency of an atom to bind additional electrons in the case of bonding. The more the electronegativity values of two elements differ, the more pronounced the resulting ionic bond will be when these elements form a chemical bond with each other. A large difference in electronegativity values exists, for example, between sodium and chlorine. 
Both elements therefore preferably form an ionic bond. The resulting compound in this case is called sodium chloride and is commonly known as salt. In a separate video, we will go into more detail about such chemical bonds. The horizontal division of the periodic table into a total of seven periods is not chosen randomly, but correspond in the shell model to the electron shells introduced by Bohr. These shells are denoted by the capital letters K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q. From period to period a new shell is added. This is also the reason why the atoms within a group become larger from top to bottom of the periodic table. The nitrogen atom, for example, has two shells within which the total of seven electrons are distributed. Let us compare this with a phosphorus atom, which is in the third period under the element nitrogen. This has a total of three shells, the K, L, and M shell, on which a total of 15 electrons are distributed. For the element arsenic, the distribution of electrons is shown with an additional N shell. Thus, the atoms within a main group become larger from period to period. Within a period, however, the atom diameter decreases from left to right. The reason for this is the increasing number of protons with increasing atomic number. The number of electrons in the shell will increase as well. The more protons an atomic nucleus contains, the higher its charge and the higher the charge of the electron shell. However, a higher charge results in a stronger force of attraction between the nucleus and the shell. Since the number of shells will not increase within a period the stronger force of attraction will bind the shell much stronger to the nucleus. Therefore, the atomic diameter decreases with increasing atomic number within a period. Within each period the element on the rightmost side of the periodic table will have the highest force of attraction between its nucleus and its shell. This configuration makes the element extremely stable. Since the elements on the rightmost side are gaseous, they are referred to as noble gases. Let us now take a closer look at the elements of a main group. The division into groups is not chosen at random. Because elements of a certain group all show a chemically similar behavior. The chemical behavior of an element is mainly influenced by the number of outer electrons of the atom, because these electrons play a major role in possible bonds. These electrons on the outermost shell are also called valence electrons. All elements of a main group have an identical number of electrons in their outermost shells. The number of valence electrons just corresponds to the number of the main group. For example, potassium belongs to the main group number one and therefore has one electron in its outer shell, so does lithium and cesium. The main group number five contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic, all elements with five valence electrons each. Exception to this rule is the element helium, which belongs to the eighth group of noble gases, but has only two electrons. Note that the determination of valence electrons by group number, with the exception of helium, applies only to the main group elements, not to the transition group elements, which we will discuss in more detail later. Besides the bonding behavior, the main group elements can also be classified according to their physical behavior. A rough classification can be made into metals and non-metals. The non-metals are marked in green in the periodic table and the metals in purple. Metals are characterized, among other things, by their electrical and thermal conductivity, their shine, and their hardness. The elements in the seventh period which are not marked in color are artificially created elements which are not classified according to the so-called CLP regulation because they only exist stably for a few seconds and thus cannot be examined in more detail. These artificially created and so far technically irrelevant elements will not be considered in more detail in the following. For some naturally occurring elements, however, a clear classification as metal or non-metal is not so easy because these elements show characteristics of both properties. These elements are therefore referred to as metalloids, sometimes also called semi-metals. Semi-metals include boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, selenium, and tellurium. These elements are marked yellow in the periodic table. Between the second and the third main group are the transition group elements. In the physical sense, these elements also all belong to the metals. This also applies to the group of lanthanoids or actinoids. Thus, about 80% of the existing elements are metals. Because of the position in the periodic table between the second and third main group and the property as metals, 
the transition group elements are also called transition metals. Note that the term transition metal must not be confused with the term semi-metal. A more detailed classification than the mere categorization into metals and nonmetals can be made using the chemical behavior already mentioned, which is mainly determined by the number of outer electrons and thus by the group number. This is usually done in nonmetals, alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, metals, metalloids, halogens, and noble gases. Note that alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals are metals in the true sense. We discuss the properties of each classification in more detail in the following. The metals known as alkali metals are all in the first main group and thus have one valence electron. The alkali metals include the elements lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Hydrogen is the exception in this group, which as a gas belongs to the non-metals. Alkali metals are very reactive elements, since they can easily donate their only outer electron in the case of bonding and thus react with other elements by emitting a lot of heat. This is particularly the case when the alkali metals react with water, air, or the halogens of the seventh main group. Due to the strong exothermic reaction and the unique color of the flame in case of combustion, as well as the relatively low density, alkali metals are often used in fireworks. The metals known as alkaline earth metals are exclusively in the second main group and thus have two outer electrons. The alkaline earth metals include the elements beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. These are also very reactive metals, although not as reactive as the alkali metals, which all have a silvery white shiny surface when polished, but oxidize rapidly when exposed to air. In contrast to the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals generally have a higher density and are relatively poorly soluble in water. The alkaline earth metal radium, which is in the seventh period, is radioactive, as the name already suggests. Radium is created from the decay of uranium. Depending on the isotope, the half-lives range from a few nanoseconds to 1,600 years. The radioactive elements are underlined in the periodic table. The alkali metal francium is also a radioactive element. Let us now consider the elements of the eighth main group, which can be found on the far right of the periodic table and thus have eight valence electrons. As already mentioned, these elements are also called noble gases. These gaseous nonmetals include the elements helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and the radioactive radon. All these elements have in common that they do not react with other elements and thus do not form bonds with other substances. They are therefore also called inert gases, from the Latin word for inactive. For this reason, noble gases cannot be assigned an electronegativity. Since the number of outer electrons has a decisive influence on the chemical behavior, a valence electron number of 8, or 2 in the case of helium, obviously means a particularly stable atomic structure. The atomic structure with 8 valence electrons is therefore also called noble gas configuration. This state is energetically particularly favorable and thus stable. This particularly stable noble gas configuration is ultimately the basis for the fact that elements form bonds with each other at all in order to achieve this energetically favorable state of 8 or 2 valence electrons. Let us now take a closer look at the seventh main group of so-called halogens, all of which have seven outer electrons in the valence shell. The halogens include the elements fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and the rarest naturally occurring element astatine, which is radioactive and used to irradiate tumors. With seven outer electrons, the halogens lack only one electron to achieve the noble gas configuration. If these elements have not already reacted with themselves, they are very reactive, especially in the presence of alkali metals, because in this way the one weakly bound outer electron of the alkali metals can be used to achieve the noble gas configuration. For example, table salt, which consists of sodium chloride, is the result of such a reaction. Besides the noble gases and the halogens, the elements hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen and sulfur belong to the classical nonmetals. They are not assigned to a special main group, but are distributed over the first and fourth to sixth main group. The transition to the already mentioned semimetals such as boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, selenium, and tellurium is smooth. The transition to the remaining metals of the main group elements such as aluminum, gallium, indium, thallium, tin, lead, bismuth, and polonium is also smooth.
These elements cannot be assigned to a certain main group either, but range from the third to the sixth group. Let's talk about the transition group elements. The division of the periodic table into main groups and transition groups results from the different order in which the orbitals are occupied by electrons, the so-called electron configuration. For the same reason a further division can be made into lanthanides and actinides. The term actinide comes from the fact that all these elements are radioactive. For the main group elements, first the s or p orbitals are occupied by electrons. Therefore, the elements of the main groups can be divided into a so-called s-block and a p-block. In the case of the transition group elements, an electron is added to the d-orbital. These elements are found in the so-called d-block. In the case of the lanthanides and actinides, the f-orbital is occupied by electrons, so that one speaks of the f-block for these elements. Note that the determination of the number of valence electrons based on the group number is no longer possible for the transition group elements. Thus, all transition metals have only one or two outer electrons. As a result, all transition elements have similar chemical properties. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.